Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are at the Mitral Conclave Conference in New York City. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Vinay Badwar, who is the Executive Chair at WVU Heart and Vascular Institute. Dr. Badwar, it is great to see you again. Good to see you. Good yeah, see you. so we're learning all these great things here at the Mitral Conclave. You have performed thousands of mitral valve surgeries. I'm curious to know over your career, which goes back 20 years, what has been the most profound advances in mitral valve therapy during your career? Well, Adam, I think I would say there's probably three main areas where we've really advanced. Um, first, particularly for the patients, is that in, a, in the grand scheme, repair of degenerative mitral valve disease or mitral valve prolapse or floppy mitral valve uh, has become a very, very safe operation. And with the proficiency in the United States now, the repair rate, regardless of where one goes for therapy, are in the 90% range. So we now know on a recent analysis of the what's called the Society of Thoracic Surgeons National Database, that in looking at 50,000 patients recently performed just for the floppy mitral valve disease, which we didn't really have the fidelity of the data before to really do that in a big scale. Um, we did just recently publish it just a couple of months ago, and that was over 50,000 patients. And the risk, the operative risk of dying, because I mean, obviously a patient, when you go for heart surgery, you want to know what, what's your risk of coming out of it is less than 1% risk of dying. So it's exceedingly safe. And the, the repair rates are exceedingly high. So I think that's a testament to our societal education we've done over the last 20 years to really help with surgeons and under, understanding not just for patients, but providers, cardiologists, but also surgeons on the technical aspects of how to reconstruct and repair valves instead of replacing them and how to do it safely. So that's kind of the most important thing for a patient or a family member to take home. The second is now once you're good at prof proficiently repairing the valves or come from a center that does a lot of them, then what's next? Well, I don't think many patients want to continue to have this done through the front. In our center and many others now, up to 14 to 15 percent of all mitral repairs done in the United States are done robotically. And that's done through a tiny little incision on the right side, uh, what we call port access, or the tiny little incision, really literally about three centimeters or less. And there's really no tissues, no bones are broken, nothing like that. In our site, uh, we not only do this as a routine, uh, in fact, no one actually gets an incision in the chest unless they need something else done. Um, it's a, the routine approach uh, to done robotically, and our repair rate is essentially 100% for these patients. Now, that said, um, what's next after that? Well, sometimes patients that come for mitral valve surgery also need something else. Many of them have atrial fibrillation or they have a leaky tricuspid valve or something else. All of that can be done now robotically and patients can get all of their things treated, including a curative intent for the treatment of atrial fibrillation, which is quite common associated with mitral valve disease. And so, I'd say the third and last little point I'd make um, is that many patients also have other elements that they present with. They have a leaky aortic valve or they have a blocked aortic valve. And I know you know a lot about that. And uh, many of your, your patients also ask questions about the aortic valve. Well, through this robotic platform, in the, since 2020, we've been doing robotic aortic valve replacements and even recently aortic valve repairs all done robotically. And so uh, I, I think we're, we're shifting the era of, of uh, Coumadin-free or no anticoagulation therapies uh, to really reconstruct patients' valves, starting with the mitral, but also treating rhythm abnormalities and other valves, including the aortic valve. Uh, and it's a very exciting and important new era as we miniaturized care, minimal trauma, fast turnaround, back to going back to their normal everyday lives and with their families in the shortest period of time. But most importantly is to have the durability of the reconstruction, hopefully for the only operation they need for the rest of their life.
and that with that durability, you don't have the ongoing Coumadin. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you also get that normality of life expectancy. Is that right? Absolutely. We have no, now lots of evidence that once the valve is repaired and repaired well in a durable fashion, that people's life expectancy essentially returns to the normal population, particularly for mitral valve repair. Well, well, Dr. Bauer, I don't know if you saw my face. There were a lot of wows and ahs going on there. I can't thank you enough. You and the entire team at WVU Heart and Vascular Institute. They are in Morgantown in West Virginia. And Dr. Badwar, thanks for Pleasure. all the innovation, all the great things you're doing. Thanks Pleasure. for being with me. Pleasure. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.